did it. This eye-catching image was awarded the best in class in editorial with a merit at the PPOC Alberta Image Competition. It also got the best out of province at the Saskatchewan Image Competition and scored a merit at the National Image Competition of the PPOC, also known as the Professional Photographers of Canada. Let's find out from the maker, Chris, how he did it. Welcome to award-winning Images Explained. My name is Manpreet and I'm your host. Chris is an Alberta-based photographer who served in the Canadian Armed Forces, where his secondary duties were of a photographer and content creator. He was also the lead camera person in the Canadian Forces Parachute Team, aka the Skyhawks. Retired from the regular forces in 2009, he continues to blend his military, his military experience with his civilian. So we are thrilled to have you on the show, Chris. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, Chris, it is. I went online browsing for information, and that's about all I could find. <laughs> but tell me, who is who really is Chris? Who's the man behind the camera? Introduce yourself, and how did you get into photography? Well. <laughs> Long story, and I'll try to keep it uh, pretty short because we don't want to eat up all the bandwidth. Uh, I started off uh, interested in photography and being a storyteller way back in my youth when I was mm. living in Germany. I was uh, part of the yearbook committee. I learned uh, darkroom arts, um, and I even maybe forged some documents to get backstage of rock and roll concerts to photograph. Uh, from there, I graduated high school and I started working in a uh, small studio outside of Toronto mm -hmm. and uh, that uh, that didn't really work out. I wanted to see a lot more, I wanted to do a lot more. So I had a plan that I was going to join the Canadian Armed Forces and become a military photographer. Back in the day in the 80s, uh, you had to do uh, combat arms before you could actually go get a trade. So about a year and a half in, uh, of jumping out of airplanes, uh, blowing stuff up. I kind of liked it, so I continued on with the military career and kept my photography as a uh, bit of a side hustle and something I was interested in. I maintained my skills, I grew my skills, and I actually ended up with the opportunities of actually doing photography and video work as a secondary duty uh, in the Canadian Forces uh, as part of the Canadian Forces Parachute Team, the Skyhawks. Uh, where I was lead camera flyer, also doing uh, intelligence gathering, uh, doing a little bit of uh, social media content, and a bunch of other duties. And nice. here I am, 2009, retired, and uh, I'm gone full-time, and I'm making a good go of it. So Chris, when did you join PPOC, and how did that benefit you? Well, I joined PPOC in 2011 at the end of the year. I was looking uh, to actually get myself uh, a little bit more credibility and get myself accredited. I was coming in just around the time of the changes in the unification of PPOC. Mm -hmm. The best thing that I came out of PPOC is that I joined Alberta, which is a very, very strong region in PPOC. There was a lot of great mentors, a lot of people that I could actually sound my ideas off of, and also a good chance for some good mentorship. And by joining up, I got a chance to learn more about the craft and get more of a deeper knowledge of what I already knew and figure out what gaps I had by going through the accreditation process. So Chris, this image that we're going to talk about, I uh, take it it's it, you had done this for a client? This image was uh, created for Andrea, who is a... Uh, Excellent uh, burlesque dancer, uh, a performer, and also end up being my uh, hair and makeup artist for many years. 
and they helped me create a lot of imagery that's award winning. And she wanted to celebrate her being pregnant and her having a, a new baby daughter coming into this world. So she engaged me to uh, do her maternity photos. But she didn't just want regular maternity photos. Since we were both heavily involved in the, uh, the pinup scene and uh, that sort of mid-50s uh, culture, we decided to do something unique and she had an idea in her head. Nice. So the inspiration for this was a collaborative uh, effort, right? Yeah, it's very much a collaborative uh, effort. And when we get into actually showing the imagery, mm -hmm. uh, I can show you the image that sort of kicked off the whole idea and mm -hmm. uh, where it evolved from there. Nice. Uh, so in fact, that might lead to my next question. How did you prepare for the image? And feel free to share your screen at any point of time that you've Feel. Perfect. So as uh, may or may not be known is that Andrea and I are, are both involved in the mid-50s uh, culture. Uh, a lot of pinup stuff and her and I actually worked together to create a lot of award-winning images. She approached me with this button over here which was uh, found on Pinterest which is I'm so crafty I make people. The neat thing about this button is it's a take on the actual poster and I said hey Andrea since this is based on the poster why don't we do the styling just like the World War II poster that was uh, displayed throughout the United States and to Canada uh, to help the war effort which was we can do it this here is the poster that inspired the button that she saw so we said okay let's pull together the wardrobe um, I had the bandana, the polka dot bandana handy, uh, which was actually a swatch material from another project. Andrea had the uh, blue uh, uh, cotton uh, shirt and had a couple rock band buttons. And uh, we had uh, some good people to help us along with actually doing the hair and makeup. So once we got the idea down, we did a uh, simple hair and makeup, as you can see. Mm -hmm. And... That is the key to a lot of good award-winning photography, is actually taking care of anything that you can in camera by having an excellent uh, hair and makeup artist. And uh, we can actually solve a lot of problems before we actually start photographing. True. At, at the time, it was a very unique situation. I was between studios. I was actually using a, a shared space, and I was doing a lot of on-location photography. So I did not have room to bring my 1200 uh what uh, Alcrom lights. So I've been adapting and learning how to use uh, SB910s with pocket wizards to actually have remote control and be able to bring light into any situation and being able to photograph everywhere. I like to think that I have a rolling studio and a rolling suitcase. <laughs> nice. Your, your, um, uh, experience with the forces, did it have uh, anything to do with your attraction to this poster? Being inspired uh, by World War II uh, pop art or uh, uh, information operations type art, and or some people call it propaganda posters, um, has been a part of uh, the aesthetic of the pinup world. Uh, the pinup world actually goes all the way back, even back to the 1800s, but it was leveraged very heavily in World War II to actually get messaging across to the people, the civilians, the military, and to actually to bring a esprit de corps together. Was I inspired by this? It was, it was inspired and my knowledge actually made me able to make the reference between the original image that Andrea brought to us mm -hmm. to be able to know that it's related to this image. Mm -hmm. So... It was basically my knowledge that gave me the ability to, to actually to create it and make reference to it. Now, were there any challenges uh, prior to uh, your shoot that you had to go through and overcome? A lot of a lot of the challenges that that uh, I had were not really big challenges. Like I said, uh, I was using a shared space at the time. I didn't have my full fledged studio yet. I was only 
three years into being uh, full time uh, when when I started making this uh, when I made this image. So I didn't have the full flex studio that I used to have downtown Toronto or the one that I have down in the west side now. So as you can see here, it's in a shared space. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a little bit of a limitation with the backdrop. Uh, I mm -hmm. only can go so far and I only can move so far away the cam from the camera to the subject. So I was limited on that. It wasn't really a problem because I knew I had the kit that I could actually do this and uh, make it work. That is your uh, setup that you used for the shoots, yes. right? Yes. Um, so you're going to talk about the equipment that you used? Okay, at the time I was using the uh, Nikon D3S uh, with a 24 to 70 millimeter lens. As mm -hmm. I knew I was going to be in and out, um, mm -hmm. and I wanted to have that little bit of flexibility. Also, I knew that I couldn't go with my 70 to 200 because of the uh, width of the room that I was uh, working in. Mm -hmm. So I decided to commit to this lens, and it would give me the flexibility I require. Mm -hmm. the, the great thing about that lens is like it goes from 24 to 70 millimeters. And it's at 2.8, so it's pretty good. Uh, I shot this one at uh, 6.3 uh, mm -hmm. for that stop. And I was shooting at about 200 of a second to uh, take away some of the ambient light in the, uh, in the room. Mm -hmm. To light up the backdrop, I mm -hmm. used uh, two SB900s mm -hmm. on Pocket Wizards TT5s clamped to the roof, uh, to the uh, drop down roof with mm -hmm. two whale tails to give the ability to actually get the light onto the background as you can see. Right. Then for the hair light, I used another SB900 uh, with a TT5 through a Firefly uh, beauty dish mm -hmm. to give the hair light. And then I used for my main another one on a TT5, a reflector for fill, and then on the top of the D3S, I had an AC3, which actually was part of the TT1, which actually gave me the ability to actually control my lights from my shooting position. Um, I did shoot on tripod to start with and then move from there. This is basic uh, yellow seam seamless that I used for the backdrop and a simple backdrop thing. So that is basically my setup. Oh, uh, one last thing, Man Photo collapsible uh, uh, tripods, which uh, actually nest together, which I can actually put in a suitcase. So they're really, really handy for travel. You mean the stands? Yes, the stands, yes. Okay, and uh, were you on a tripod? I, I was on a tripod to start with, and then I, uh, then I started moving around and doing some other images. So. As you can see, we had some fun with this set, and you can see the reflector a little bit more that was actually being held by my assistant. Uh -huh. So we captured this the image as per the the original idea, mm -hmm. and it's pretty good. Um, it's not as dynamic and not as exciting as as I thought it could be. So since this was the basis, this was the uh, this is the uh, continuation of the basis. We went and we created that. Mm -hmm. While we were shooting, I thought, you know what? Let's try a different angle. Let's celebrate the bump. Let's, let's, let's play around with the angles. So I got a little bit closer, got up on my Pelican case so I could actually get a little bit of a down tilt and actually get a little bit more separation and just change it up to, to make it, whoops, to change it up to have a little bit more dynamic, I think, and a, a better quality of light to make it more structured and have uh, have a 3D quality to it. It does make quite a difference. Yeah. And what did your uh, post-processing look like? What is your workflow? My post-processing and workflow is uh, starts off and actually in the photography piece. Um, by shooting clean, I get a great image um, right out of the camera with the lighting and a lot of times doesn't take much much work. I generally like to always uh, edit with the rule of anything that's gone in two weeks I'll take away. I maybe take off a couple pounds 
and I may adjust a few angles. But all in all, I do not overly edit because I want the image to be truthful and be re reflective of the individual at that time because a portrait is a snapshot in time, right? Yeah. So, as you can see, I did a little bit of healing, a little bit of cloning, a little bit more healing, and a little bit of cloning at 3%, just to even out uh, some things. Then, with people being pregnant, they generally have a little bit more of a red tinge to their skin. So, I take a little bit of the red out. And then, to give it a little bit of a glow, I do a little bit of so soft focus. Then I come back, and then I do a little bit more heal. So that there is basically the, the edit with a little eye pop, which is done by actually taking a, uh, a white and putting on the, uh, on the eyes and uh, using uh, soft light. overlay. Overlay. I actually use overlay oh, to, to give a little bit of uh, eye pop, as you can see. Mm. So as you can see that. And that was basically the edit of the body. Then, normally, I will go and I'll visit and I'll go, okay, like, what do I need to do in the background? Well, I'm going to move it to the left and I'm going to add a little bit more negative space on the right. So all I did was move the entire image, made a copy of it, moved it over to the left and got it more to the blocking that I'd like. Did a little bit of fill and... Uh, I uh, did a little extension um, using the previous layer as uh, as uh, the fill because this was actually done before a lot of that content work. So yeah. a lot of it was cloning and uh, stamping. I was just thinking today it would be so simple to do it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been I've been uh, leveraging, uh, experimenting with the uh, creative fill to see what it actually can do, which just dropped this week. Uh, this last week, I should say, and uh, it's definitely a, a game changer. Yeah. So yeah. now that I have Andrea where I want it, it's time to start building the uh, the graphics to go with it. Mm -hmm. And the fun part of the graphics is that I have a frame of reference from the poster. Mm -hmm. So utilizing uh, uh, Adobe Illustrator, I do a lot of my graphic work in there. Mm -hmm. And then I bring it out, and I bring it in as a uh, as a smart object. This one I end up rasterizing down because I wanted to do some other work on it. Um, then I create it since on the original poster it had a little bit of a shadow, so I created a little shadow utilizing uh, the um, using uh, layers so on and so forth. All right. Mm -hmm. And that's the original we did it, which is not being used. Then, of course, there's the bottom banner, which was created also in uh, Illustrator and is still a smart object. Just masked it out so her jeans can show through in her belly. Mm -hmm. Then the cool thing, and I'm just going to pop back to to here, to the original poster, is that this is where... We start deviating a little bit more from the from the product. In the banner, in the original post, this is War Production Coordinating Committee, and it had Westinghouse, which was the company's name that was actually uh, doing this uh, uh, esprit de corps sort of poster, right? And then it had the the artist, and it had all all the date stuff like that. So I ended up going and deciding to put our own take on it because. Since Andrea is a makeup artist, and also since she's pregnant, baby production coordinating committee, nice. and then to add a little bit more, put her makeup company, her uh, makeup artist company, as yeah. the replacement for the Westinghouse. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So with that, it's pretty much done. Add a little bit of contrast. Mm -hmm. Export high res, put it on a mat, enter into competition, away you go. So now entering competitions, um, how has this helped you personally in your photography? And how has entering competitions helped you in your business? 
Image competition is uh, is about testing oneself, right? Mm -hmm. I'm one of the people that actually likes to be able to take whatever is on hand that I've created and submit it. Because when we do accreditation, accreditation is about proving yourself to be above industry standard by submitting a body of 10 images to be judged by judges and be ascertained to be above industry. So accreditation is that first level. Image competition is the next level. And that is definitely above just being industry standard mm -hmm. because everybody that's in the room has to be above industry standard to be able to compete. So by going into image competition with PPOC, I'm showing that I'm above industry standard plus some. And especially mm -hmm. if I'm actually taking the same work that I'm delivering to a client mm -hmm. and just submitting without edits or working it for, for competition, it shows that I have worthy imagery that's right out of my studio mm -hmm. that I create consistently at that level. So it's a great, great opportunity for me to, to vet my work, to check it out, to make sure that it's, I'm a step above the industry standard. Right. And there's a little bit of a rush as well. Uh, yeah. Well, it, it makes, it makes a, uh, quite a difference in the eyes of the client, you know, a prospective client coming in has heard about you, has known that, you know, images have won competitions, mm -hmm. puts a little more trust in you, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I have in, uh, in my, uh, in my cell room, I have all my trophies and stuff like that for mm -hmm. all the different imagery that I've, I've picked up all the different best of classes, stuff like that. Uh, so it does give them something to look at and it gives yeah. me that, that credibility to show that I've been assessed by the industry to see that I'm actually worthy of being recognized for my skills and my abilities. And I think um, all us photographers or artists uh, go through our ups and downs. And every time you feel a little down, that's a good room to walk into and look at your trophies. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like almost like a pat on your back. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, yeah. The other thing that also too is that when I have, uh, when I have, uh, not necessarily a great competition year or something like that. And there's, there's times that I've never hung like four out of four and never made it. Right. Uh -huh. uh, but I've gone back and I don't go look at the trophies. I actually go and look at uh, my letters or my emails from clients because I actually have a folder for my kudos. So if there's something that a client posts on social media, I'll take a screenshot and I'll throw it in the folder. If I get nice. an email, I'll take a screenshot of the email. If I get a, uh, uh, a card, uh, which I've, I'm actually looking over at some cards that are from clients that are uh, on uh, my uh, TV mm -hmm. that, uh, that are thanking me for the work. I look at that stuff because competition is good. It's a good opportunity to challenge yourself, but it's not the be all end all. It's, yeah. it's a tool that we can use to better ourselves, to market ourselves, mm -hmm. but it's ultimately the relationship with the client that, that is where the real winning's at. True. Very true. Now, um, I know I've taken quite a bit of your time, uh, but uh, quickly tell us where can viewers see more of your work or reach you or um, get involved with what you are uh, doing online and offline? Well, online, uh, you can hit uh, OSB photo on Instagram. I don't, uh, I don't post as much as I should. I've been uh -huh. really, really busy. Uh, and I haven't been taking care of my social media accounts very well, but I do sometimes post there. Uh, LinkedIn is a good place to find me. Uh, that's where I do a lot of my uh, my network and stuff like that because I do uh, business to business work. Uh, mm -hmm. And then of course on uh, on the good old Facebook, uh, one step beyond. That's uh, mm -hmm. all one word is is my uh, Facebook thing, and I mostly am engaging socially on there sharing my Thursday thoughts, uh, trying to make the place a little bit better and mm -hmm. just keeping in touch with everybody. Good. I'll put all these links in the show notes, so make sure you send them to me afterwards. Okay. Will do. Okay. Well, thank you so much for sharing your time, your experience and your knowledge. It's been wonderful chatting with you. 
Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And if you've enjoyed this uh, interview, make sure you hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.